Hello, what is up? Welcome to another episode of the Miller Sports Podcast, or what I like to call Fridays with Chris. I am your host, Franklin Miller, joined by who I just said, Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what's going on, man? How you what's doing? Going How on, you man? Man? Uh, pretty good week, pretty good end into the week. Got a somewhat good one on our hands tonight, so... Somewhat, the week. somewhat, yeah, somewhat. You know, got a little, got a little damper, but you know, yeah. Now it's all good. It's understandable with playoffs around the corner. As the Suns will be playing the Lakers tonight. For those that don't know, as they'll be going without a few of their starters. Dare I say, the top four, so to speak, on their team. As Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, and DeAndre Ayton are all sitting out, according to Monty Williams and the Phoenix Suns. Tonight, I know being at the game yesterday, um, after the Nuggets game, uh, Monty Williams alluded to after the game that he didn't have an idea of what he was going to do at that moment. But based off that answer, I can kind of get a hint in my head of like, yeah, all these guys are probably going to sit out with playoffs around the corner and all three of them, or three out of the four really, and Chris Paul, Devin Booger, and Kevin Durant playing heavy minutes. Um, I don't know if anybody knows, but like Kevin Durant played 40 minutes last night um Devin Booker and Chris Paul played 37 and so yeah with playoffs around the corner like I said it it makes the most sense for these guys um to sit out so I kind of just answered my the question I was about to ask so I'll just ask it for you Chris um and that is with the big force in now do you think it's a good call by Moss Williams a bad call because I know that these guys still really need you know I mean, Kevin Durant's in them. They only play like eight games together, so they probably still need a little bit of chemistry, but you know, before going into play postseason. But yeah, what are your thoughts overall about the about the news today? Uh, I mean, I feel like it's something that didn't have to be. Uh, probably was going to happen either way, but putting yourself in that position with the Nuggets last night where you got KD playing 41 minutes, like you said, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, kind of high 30s. It probably didn't have to happen. I know a lot of people were anticipating the LeBron KD matchup, which even if you got KD, you're not getting, you know, that whole thing. Um, Mm -hmm. I think, like I wrote last night, it's a good and a bad thing. One, it's good because you can see that despite his previous injury, Durant can play 41 minutes. I think that's a good thing. Uh, Bad part about that, like I said, it's mixed feelings because some people may look at that and say, why are we running him into the dirt right before playoffs? And we're locked into the, you know, playoffs. We're locked into our seating. So... I kind of looked at it both ways, like it's it's a good thing. And then with him resting tonight, you know, hey, we got what we needed from him. We see he can go, yeah, let's go ahead. Even though it's not good for what people pay to come to see, uh, you know, it's kind of like, let's just go ahead and sit him, be rather safe than sorry. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm i with you on that, man. And even alluding to it as well, because I know going back Tuesday when the Suns played the Spurs, Monty Williams talked after the game because somebody asked him a question about the idea of sitting his players after they just clinched a playoff berth. Um, And he was talking about how he wanted to get his guys kind of used to those playoff minutes. Um, And I think that's kind of what he was alluding to yesterday when he played all those guys 40 to 30 some minutes. But to your credit, like you said, and I agree with you, I think the idea wasn't for them to play that many minutes. I think the idea was hopefully they would end it sooner rather than later and then Kevin Durant even talked about that yesterday at the game where he was like he was expecting the game to kind of be over in the third quarter and I don't know if that was a slight at the Nuggets uh or or whatnot I think he's just being a realist because all the all their starters are out and and we know that a fully healthy Sun squad and what they're capable of so I understand from a realist perspective what he was saying which everybody was probably thinking the same thing but yeah um to answer the question like I said I think it was the right decision coming off a back-to-back I do think, however, I don't think they're going to sit out um, the last game of the season. I kind of told you before this, Chris, that that, that they might and they probably will. But now I, the more I think about it, I don't think they will. I think I think they're going to play a half, if anything, or probably play like a quarter or something, and then they're going to sit out. I think he's going to use that as more of like yeah. a preseason type of game um, just to, you know, gel well 
going into the playoffs because everybody's going to already have a week off. So you just want to get yeah. familiarity with that. But this was based off of playing heavy minutes yesterday. So, um, yeah, that was basically. As long as they don't announce it like uh, Jason Kidd did with Luca tonight. Oh, that was I think rough. I'll be okay. Yeah, I think rough. I'll be okay. I've yeah, never I've, seen a coach do that. <laughs> I don't either. think I've seen a coach publicly come out and say, I'm playing him for one quarter. That's it. And we're fighting for a play in spot, like severely fighting. What that's mm-hmm. telling me is they're low key tanking. That's a team yeah, that's man. basically like saying, Yeah, we know Kyrie's not staying here. We know that even if we do make the playoffs, we're not going far. Let's try to get the best pick available and figure it out in free agency to build around Luca and call it a day. And I'm like, they ain't even, to me, they ain't even hiding it at this point. But, you know. Yeah, that was one of those matchups that I think even pre-KD, we were kind of looking forward to, like, the possibility of probably playing them again. And it's like, how far they've fallen. It's Yeah. I mean, they were right there with everybody for a minute. And now you look, and they're, they're, yeah, it's sad. Sad business. It is sad. sad. Yeah. I know Suns fans that are. We'll be looking at this later, or even the Suns fans now are just like, they don't really care too much about what's going on in Dallas because of everything that happened last year and even a little bit this year. So, um, personally, I feel bad for, for Luca and, and, and that team, personally. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, I especially mean, with. Yeah. I, especially, I think you just got the wrong pieces around them. I mean,. It's not a, you know, uh, Stephen A. touches a lot of slack, but he did say the other day, and I had to agree with him. He said, I don't have one bad thing to say about Kyrie since he's been in Dallas. It is not Kyrie's fault. Yeah, it's not his fault. I mean, He's he's, a scapegoat at this point. Yeah, he's just a scapegoat. I mean, for Luka to come out and say, we need to play defense better, I feel like every team comes out of the end. I'm like, buddy, it starts with you. (laughs) Yeah. Believe it or not, like – and I have to even add to that, man, which I uh, – when Jason Kidd earlier in the season or midway through the season when they were kind of going on an up-and-down scale and Jason Kidd said, and I quote – I'm going to paraphrase it, but he was basically like, um, we're here to outscore teams. Like, we're not really – defense is, you know – I'm not saying he's saying defense is whatever, but he's basically saying, like, we're here to outscore teams. You know, everybody – scoring in the 120s now like basically he was saying like who cares about defense we're gonna beat you with our offense kind of and honestly with the way they build their team around Luca, that's basically how they're gelling it but it kind of came back to bite them in the butt a little bit it's such Um, a 180 i mean if you look back at last year's playoffs i still vividly remember kid practically being on the court the way he was coaching them on offense and on defense i mean it just feels like he's not there almost. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I feel for Mavs fans. I really do. Um, yeah. I, and I Especially if you're going to the fun. Western Conference Finals, man. Like, that's yeah. tough. That's tough. And I said something to someone the other day. I said, you know, it's sad because as bad as I think Kid probably should be out of there, them winning against the Suns last season – is probably going to keep him in that spot for a little while because they looked at that and said, okay, we know he can do it. We just need to – I don't think right he pieces. can do it anymore. I just – I don't Yeah, know. I mean, after a comment like that, my initial thought yeah. was like he, – He's you gotta, out. You got, you got to find somebody He's else. He's checked man. out. I mean, yeah. sounds like a guy that's going to probably resign before they fire him at the end of the season, but, you yeah. know. It's tough. It's, it's it's tough and it's yeah it just goes to show you that it's not easy to to win in the NBA you need the right pieces Hello. I think man losing Brunson was tough losing Dinwiddie you basically lost three guys for Kyrie now everybody's looking at Kyrie as if he's the problem when actuality is not the problem if anything if they didn't have now obviously you would rather have Spencer Dinwiddie and Dorian Finney Smith there because they're a better fit around Luca and the team is a better fit overall. But and that's not to say it's Kyrie's fault per se. It's that's more of like the GM not kind of building a team around those two. You're kind of yeah. just like here, Luca, Kyrie, outscore everybody for us. And and that's just a horrible it didn't work. It didn't necessarily work with KD and Kyrie in Brooklyn. 
I mean, they were more, more so built around offensive firepower. There was no defensive overwhelming, well, you know. They had or, Nick Claxton. They had Nick exactly, Claxton. I was just going to say, they had Nick Claxton. He still, he hasn't even hit his peak yet. I, I like Nick Claxton, but he hasn't yeah. even hit his peak yet. But if that's the one guy, and I think back then they had Bruce Brown. Um, they did. Which went crazy against the Suns last night. Yeah. But- he had a great game against Boston in the playoffs too. Yeah, I don't think he, a lot of people remember that. When you when you don't have those kind of pieces around anymore, though, it takes away even the little bit of defensive, you know, presence you had. Um, Tim Hardaway's yeah. not, you know, they don't they don't have you know Christian Wood. I think if they used him more, they would probably get a lot more value out of him. But kids' rotations are. I, it was almost going to be sad to see if they did make the playoffs, honestly, just because of the way that he uses the people that are on the roster. But, yeah. I mean, Luca came out the other day and said that he misses Jalen. So, I mean, probably wouldn't yeah. dig too deep into that, but, I mean, yeah. Brunson the pudding. Well, so. it's, not a, it's not a secret that the Mavs really wanted to keep Brunson. I mean, no, Mark, Cuban even, Mark Cuban even said that it would have happened if the dad didn't and the dad didn't get involved, you know. Too many connections. Yeah, yeah. too many connections. So it, yeah, like I said, it's it, it's rough. It's it 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 kind of yeah, it's a, it's an unfortunate situation. But I know if, as, if you're a Suns fan, you you can you know gracefully say thank you after everything that happened last year with Luca. You don't have to see them in the playoffs. But now speak, exactly. But with that, now there's like new opponents that the Suns have to prepare for in the West. Um, so I ask you, Chris, like, who would you rather play in the first round out of all the teams in the West? Because I know we have guys like the Warriors, who's full, is miraculously getting fully healthy out of nowhere, and then you got um, the Clippers minus a Paul George. You have the Lakers, um, who still looks up and down at, from time to time, but. If Anthony Davis is on his game, they are a tough team to beat. Um, you still have the Timberwolves there, uh, maybe. Uh, who would you rather play in the first round? And uh, to, to say, uh, so I mean, currently, and I mean, it's slowly but surely locking itself up. Uh, right now, we would play the Clippers as it's currently present. Yeah. Without Paul George, you still got Kawhi Leonard. Pretty sure we could beat them and. I'd say probably, I must say six, but I really want to say five games. Um, not much of a threat there. Is it good for the Suns? Yes, because you get to rest more before the next round. Prior to that, for a hot minute, though, the the uh, Warriors were in the fifth spot. And I was like, oh, that's if we get them that first round, I, they just have this mystique when the playoffs come that they just can cut on, more so Curry has this mystique he can cut on. So, uh, but if I had to go off of my own personal preference, I would probably say I'm really ready to see us play um, more so the Kings. I just think they're Mm. exciting. I think they're young. I like how they play. I like the style clash. Um, We don't necessarily do the nonstop run and gun fast tempo it's more systematic. You know, we have our moments where we do it, but there, I love that style clash. I really would like to see that. If we get past the Kings, I mean, yeah, you still got the Nuggets who almost won with no starters last night. But, yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm kind of interested to see the Kings. Not too interested in seeing too, too many other teams that are out there just because, uh, I mean, the Thunder are the Thunder. They'll put up a little fight, but – they're that um, Pelicans are too injury prone, I think, to really pose a super threat like they once did. Um, kind of know what the Nuggets are about, kind of know what the Grizzlies are about. So I think that's the one thing. The Kings have surprised everyone this year. So I think everyone's just waiting to see what they can do yeah. when, you know, things get rolling, even though they'll probably end up playing, you know, either the Lakers or, um, well, not the Lakers, the Warriors or the Lakers probably or someone like that. It's going to be fun. I, I'm most excited to see them, and hopefully we uh, we meet. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's really interesting. I was even thinking to myself, like, 
I know this whole time we were all saying, like, oh, the East is better than the West. But in reality, I think the West is a lot deeper than the East. I think the top three teams in the East can probably yes. beat majority of the teams in the West. Yes. But I think the West got – 100 yeah, the West got the more deep team. Hundred percent. Kendrick and Perkins I think, got on uh, ESPN and said that he said that the East was better, but he used your point. He said because if you take the Bucks, the Celtics, the Seventy Sixers, and you put them in the uh, West, they can beat pretty much all those teams. True point to what you said, but on the flip side of that, once you go from there down, it's not the same argument to be able to say the entire East is no. Yeah. I mean, half of those teams that were threats, Bulls, Raptors, the Heat, yeah, they're all fighting for their lives right now, basically in the play-in tournament. So, not 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 necessarily the same uh, tune that you can carry with that. So yeah, yeah, and yeah. So, <laughs> but I like your I like your your um pick with the style clash if this if the suns were to play the kings though they have to they'd have to get to the western conference finals at this point yeah um do i see the kings make it to the western conference finals this year nah. i am not sure i don't think so nah. um it's like they're I, I, who knows mike brow could 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 have he, could. He's he could make he, he could have a 2020 type suns run he could have a 2014 15 type suns run you never know he yeah. has, he he he's been there before. You know, he's been to the finals before with yeah. Cleveland. He's he's been to many finals with the Warriors as an assistant coach. So he's he he knows it could be done. basketball. It yeah. could be done. Yeah, he's for sure, he he for sure should be coach of the year. That's not even a question. Oh uh, yeah. I don't think it's I don't think that's remotely close. Like I said, I yeah. like the Kings. I don't think I think this year for them is gonna be that year where people say you know, you're sad because you didn't make it. You had, you know, the fan base gets riled up because they haven't been to the playoffs and I, I forgot how many years. Oh, yeah, dude. That place is going to be loud. It's going to be so loud yeah. and fun. It's going to be that. one of those things where they do lose to whomever and it's going to be, you know what, we take this, we build off of it, we come back. Now. It's going to be bad. But yeah. who they lose to is the the question. I don't see them getting to the conference finals. Yeah. Um, if they clash with the if with the Warriors in that first round, that might be it, which would be a buzz kill to a lot of people that were yeah. happy to see them get there. But personally, I think the, personally, if the, they do play the Warriors, I have the Warriors winning that series. Only, yeah, I know it's not to say honestly, the Kings have been the better team this year. I'm just saying more. Oh so yeah, it's just that experience. Just playoff, playoff basketball. Is it's that experience. And yeah, the experience is gonna get them. Yeah, if yeah. it was another team, I probably would say the Kings could probably get over them. Like maybe if it was uh, maybe the the Grizzlies that were down there they were playing, or Ooh. someone that doesn't have that much playoff experience. But the Warriors just have been there, and they just like I said, they just cut it on. They know what they're coming in there to do. This they know how intense the builders are. They're prepared for all of that. So. Yeah, but like you said, they you know Mike Brown and them they could they could I mean if they, they could shock, knock off they the could shock the world man they got Franklin. they got a team they got depth Franklin if they could knock off the defending champs in the first I round, I don't want to see them I don't want to see them I want to see them I, I'll actually be kind of rooting for them against Memphis because I know Memphis is going to get to the second round so I, I, yeah. yeah currently projected if the Lakers hold into their spot, that would be their first round. A lot of people are, you know, people are really riding the Lakers right now because they made their way back in and they're like their finals bound. And I'm like, the the I'm power. Not, uh, yeah, the uh, power of LeBron for y'all to say that kind of stuff, just they're not finals bound. I don't like the roster as it's constructed, like to a T, it's better. But I don't like it, like to where I'm like, they're no. Nah. Uh, this is the first time I've seen a playoff series or playoff bracket when the NBA where everybody's picking everybody in a conference but the first and the second seed. I barely see anybody picking the Nuggets and I barely see anybody picking Memphis. I think a lot of people don't I think a lot of people don't have anybody picking Memphis because a lot of people are thinking they're going to run into the Warriors and the Warriors are going to find a way to beat them or they're going to run into the Lakers first round. The Lakers are going to find a way to beat them. Honestly, I think Memphis is going to beat the Lakers in five games if they play. That's a bold take. That's a very bold bold take. take. That's my my take, though. That's my take, though. Memphis is that team, bro. If the Lakers only win one game, 
the implications that people will put because you know it doesn't take much for people to throw a stain on LeBron's legacy. Oh my gosh, you got beat by a bunch of young gunners like Jai and Desmond Bain and Jared Jackson and oh my they gosh, don't, they don't have a, they don't have anybody that can stop. Well, nobody can stop LeBron, obviously, but they don't have a they don't have anybody on that team that, in my opinion, that can guard Jaw. I think Jaron Jackson can make Anthony Davis's life a little bit hectic. He definitely can. I'm telling you, he's going to be the biggest can. X factor in that in that series if that him were to happen. And, and Stephen Adams. But I will say this: this is my hot take, though. So I would say if the Pelicans, I mean not Pelicans, if the Grizzlies were to play the Lakers, I have the Grizzlies beating them in five games, which is which is crazy. <laughs> the vast More so for that, and it's 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 funny, but that home court advantage. Probably yeah. is going to play in the Grizzlies. LeBron's going to get them one, maybe two. Oh yeah, even oh, if he has to do it by himself. I mean, yeah. if AD's leg gives out, and I mean LeBron's leg gives out all the time. He still finds a way. But if AD leg gives out and he's the only real option, yeah, then yeah, but, I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, but I will say if the Grizzlies play the Pelicans, that might be a little bit more of a tough spot, even with or without Zion. To me. I think they just match up really, really well with them personnel wise. Valanchunas, if he if he can, you know, guard get a lot of minutes, can can be a threat against um uh against um blanking on the name. Jaron Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> and then and Steven Adams for that matter too. And also I think that um what's his name? I think that Herbert Jones can really they got a lot make, of make Jaws job a lot harder, especially when it comes to going in the paint. So it's interesting. I really want to see New Orleans go far, honestly. It's just they their injuries. I mean, I know every team has them, but theirs probably is the worst in terms of luck. Like they just happen at the weirdest time, excluding Zion, because Zion is not yeah. dependable injury wise. But everybody else, Brandon Ingram. All those guys, it's like it just happens at the weirdest and worst times for them. It's yep. crazy. Yeah, they can't afford to have Ingram go down, or that's that's no. Uh, it's 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 it. I mean, if he goes down, that's even though that's Trey Murphy's been amazing. That's another guy yeah. that I've done as I'm talking yeah. about. Trey Murphy's been amazing. So, and to your credit, with the whole you know people aren't banking on the first or the second seed, I think with the Grizzlies. They had that energy in the beginning of the season. Um, right up until that whole John Moran, we good in the West. Thing. Yeah, I told the we good in the West stuff with Jaw and all that stuff start happening. And it didn't just affect the perception of them. It, I think it literally affected how they played. Like, they just don't have that same – you don't get that same feeling from them that you probably did at the beginning of the season. And then with the Nuggets, they do this every year. They win a crazy amount of games, and people get behind them because they want to see them do good. Most of them, they're younger. Yeah. They're the next, you know, ushering in, you know, not the next Warriors, but possibly could be that next dynasty-ish with Jokic and, you know, having them pieces around them. But they do this every year where they have, like, a really great regular season, and then playoffs come, and it's, like, yeah. just never enough. I hear you on that. I think my thing with the Nuggets for this year is one, they're f- fully healthy as opposed to those other years where it was kind of just Jokic and that was it. And even then, that one year where it was just pretty much Jokic, they still went to the second round, which is, but then they got swapped by the Phoenix. I am a little nervous um, if the Suns got to go up against the Nuggets in the second round. That's if they make it past the oh, first I'm, round. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely nervous. Especially, about that. especially after these last two games. Now, I know. In my opinion, last night, or the well, the first matchup at home two weeks ago, or not two weeks ago, last week, they had a big lead. They kind of got comfortable, and they kind of let them come back. You know, that happens. Yesterday, they clinched playoffs. They saw that everybody was out. They probably went to that game like, you know, we'll treat this like preseason kind of, and then – Nuggets like jumped on them, especially coming after a game that they lost to Houston. They wanted to like answer the coach's uh, challenge of you know responding, and they sure responded, and they kind of got the Suns off on a grip of like, oh shoot, and then you know Suns Suns finally settled down and won that game. But yeah, I'm telling you, man, I like 
I'm very impressed with their bench, and they haven't seen their starters in a hot minute, um, which is funny because the times where the Suns played in Denver, all the Suns players were injured, and then the times <laughs> the, the Nuggets played in Phoenix, the Nuggets starters were injured. I feel like there's a collision course going where they're going to see each other in the second round. Oh, I'm, just, uh, yeah. I'm just curious to see that what this tells me is which bench is going to come through more than. And that. I mean the Nuggets, and I think I said this earlier in the season. I was a, I am a pretty decent fan of uh, Bones Highland. Mm-hmm. I know he's erratic. He doesn't necessarily think before he does certain things. But I did think when the Nuggets did elect to move on from him, I'm like, wow, that's a pretty big piece coming off yeah. the bench that you it has not really overly slowed them down though. So because Bruce Brown, good. because you got Bruce Brown and then you got a more um veteran presence ball handler Reggie Jackson that can help yeah. with that as well. That was a huge pickup. Even yeah. watching him last night, I was like, man, that was a huge pickup. Yeah, Bruce huge. Brown at 31. Yeah. And, and I know said, I know you're like talking about he yeah, turns it on in the playoffs. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, oh yeah. I've seen him with the Clippers. I've seen him with the Clippers, man. He's and and I mean, I've seen Bruce Brown with the Nets, and I've seen. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Bruce Brown. He. I mean, the, the Celtics did what they did to the Nets last year, but I mean, if there was somebody other than Katie and Kyrie pumping life into that team, it was Bruce. Like he was. He can really cut it on. That just yeah. adds to what Jokic brings, what Aaron Gordon brings, what uh, Jamal Murray brings, like, they're, and I worry about the matchup of Jokic and Aiton, or whomever may get caught in that switch, um, you know, be it Durant, um, you know, a Kogi. It's Aiden, really I'm, hard to stop them. But. Yeah, I'm not really concerned with Aiden against Jokic. Honestly, um, Aiden's not gonna be able to stop Jokic. Nobody's gonna be able to stop Jokic. Yeah. But Jokic on defense, I'm not really too concerned with Aiden. I think Aiden's has had pretty successful numbers against Jokic in the postseason and throughout his career, if I'm not mistaken. But um, I know I didn't even really answer the question about the first round. Who I'd want to see the Suns play? I I do want to see them play either the Clippers or the Timberwolves. I don't want them to step that anywhere. sounds like just for rest purposes. <laughs> I don't want them to sit anywhere near the Warriors. Um, that's a that is no. I don't want. I don't want them to. I don't want them to do that. Oh no! no. <laughs> I don't want them if to we're talking about the competition standpoint, then yeah. I oh, would love to from, see... the sto- from the store from the storyline and all that's yeah. fine. But I'd rather but wait for about, I, yeah. I'd rather wait for that in the Western Conference Finals to make it even more dramatic. But yeah. Yeah, if for, we're talking early, about preservation, yeah, give me the Timberwolves, give me yeah. the, give me the Clippers, we'll, we'll yeah. be all right. Yeah. yeah, I think, and obviously them not having um, Paul George is huge, and I think that can yeah. you know you know be be a situation right He's there. He's another one. It's like it's so unfortunate. It's like he literally gets injured and. Especially since coming to LA, it's like if he's in, Kawhi's not in, or vice versa. They have their moments where they play a stretch of games together, and then they're you know one of them is out there fending for their own. Which I want to say last year it was Paul George that was out there by himself when the Clippers played the Pelicans. Yeah, and now it's going to be reversed where you know Kawhi's out there and he has to you know which he could be successful. I mean he, he definitely could, but. Oh, 100%. I mean, he took the Raptors where he took them, but this is the West, and it's uh, – you're not playing the Hawks. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and I, I found the stats with Jokic against Aiden – or Aiden against Jokic, and Aiden's averaging 20.7 points per game and 12 rebounds and a steal. So That's pretty on par for him. And to That's do that stat, against yeah. – yeah, to do that against Jokic, that's that's a positive. That's a pretty yeah, that's, positive. Yeah, that's a big positive. If he averages that um, against against uh, Jokic in some time in the future, then that'd be sick if he had to, if he has to go up against him, you know. So, well, I know one topic that was very intriguing to you. Speaking of someone keeping up an average, was Chris Paul. Yes, and his miraculousness. 
with uh, recklessness. Last, I feel like I made that up just now. You did. <laughs> okay, you did. thank you, thank you. In his back-to-back big performances that he's had going on um, as of late, so now that's good stuff as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Chris Paul just—he's been he had like twenty-two points against on Tuesday. We had twenty-five yesterday against the Nuggets, and I know the Spurs are rebuilding. The Nuggets had a bunch of bench players, but this is a great thing for Suns fans if you're looking at it from the standpoint of how Chris Paul has played. Because I mean, I, you know, listening to Monty and KD and even Devin Booker talk about Chris Paul, um, at the post game pressers, they were saying like, "Hey, we want him to shoot the ball more," um, and the more. I heard that, and the more I kept thinking to myself, and the more I kept seeing him shoot the ball throughout the year, I'm like, Chris Paul, you know, he's actually one of our best shooters on the team. He just doesn't do it. He just doesn't do it. And it's like, and that's really sad, but I think what really helps with having a guy like Katie here is he'll have no choice but to shoot because he'll be so wide open, and that's amazing, especially with a shooter like him. So, I mean, he's averaging averaging like 39% from three this year. Um, That's on just two threes a game, three threes a game, but he just doesn't um, take them a lot. But I mean, yeah, he doesn't take them a lot, but if he does, yeah. if he does look, look out, man. Cause, cause you can't, you can't guard all three. At one. Like, you, you, it, I mean, it's, 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 it's impossible to guard all three of them. Even if you do, I mean, it's, it's impossible. And I mean, you still got Aiden in the post can stretch out to the mid range. Um, you got a Kogi who can literally show you that he can go into a high level mode at times. Um, you know, he can be pretty quiet out there with them sometimes, but I mean, even if you're just focusing on Chris Paul, DeAndre, I mean, Chris Paul, Booker and Katie, you can't, if all of them are clicking, the best thing you can do is just hope you can click back. But if you can't, like you said, it's not a lot you can do to actually stop that. I mean, that's, oh. that's not... Yeah, yeah. The last two games has been un un Chris Paul like he's averaged two and a half assists. Like he had three against the Spurs and then two last night against the Nuggets. And um, but he has um eleven threes. Yeah, people were on like an assist you know. watch last night. I saw people were saying like he is this going to be like the first game in however long that he hasn't gotten an assist. So. Mm, yeah. Crazy. Now you know Chris Paul's always well. He actually went the whole game until the fourth quarter where he, yeah, where he dropped the pass to KD in the corner and KD nailed it. He mm. dropped one to KD, um, one of those plays in the fourth, and everybody was like, "Oh, here it is!" And then KD swung it to uh, a Kobe who was cutting yeah. uh, to the basket, and I was like, "And there it goes hockey yep. assist." But not hockey assist. assist. Yeah, yep. hockey those, assist. But yeah. Hey man, those hockey assists—they count in two K. They, they get your yeah. they get your grade up. They get your grade up. Yeah, get your grade up. Get your grade up. Yeah, but it's been amazing watching just Chris Paul. How efficient he's just been. His plus minus has been amazing. His his plus minus against Denver wasn't great, but his plus minus yeah. in the game against San Antonio was off the charts. So, um, yeah. and I I'm expect and yeah, I guess my the question was like, could you? Is this more like? Is this kind of just a? Not a flash in the pan because we he's capable of this, and we've seen playoff Chris Paul like he's averaged like twenty in the playoffs throughout his career, and averaged seventeen and a half last year. So, is this kind of more of like a situation of, eh, I don't see him shooting the ball this much in the playoffs, and I see him coming kind of going five points, twelve assists, and you know two or four from the field, or or do you see um him kind of going um eighteen to twenty four points, three to four threes, five five to six assists as opposed to 10 to 12. Um, what, like kind of what, which direction are you flowing in? Is this kind of like a new Chris Paul based off what you're hearing from people talking about him? Or it's kind of more like you kind of see him going back to like him just kind of deferring to other guys. I think it could be a little bit of both. I think we're going to see him kind of like to your first point, go back to five points, 12 assists, that whole margin. Yeah, but I think that once it gets rolling, if you don't get kind of like last night, Durant wasn't uh, explosive in the first half. He kind of picked it up more as the second half got going. I think if you see that, 
and given the playoffs, then you'll probably see Paul say, all right, you know what? Let me start chucking him up, you know, yeah. doing what he's got to do to help out Booker as well. Um, but I think to your point, that first, probably that first round, I think he is going to try to take a back seat more, try to let Durant find his groove because you do want, even if Chris Paul is clicking, you would prefer to have Durant clicking. A clicking Durant is a clicking Durant. So I think you probably see that a little bit. And if it doesn't look like it's starting to uh, like take effect, then he's probably going to just do what he did the, the other day. So Yeah, I actually agree with that too. I think I see that um, a lot of that as well. I, I see him kind of going to the flow of like, hey, I'm just going to – facilitate here and there i'm not i'm what when my when the when the plays are there within the system or the way the defense is playing I'll, I'll take those shots but i won't be looking to shoot and i think that's because hey we have katie we have book if they're struggling or like if both of them are struggling or if one of them is struggling then i'll start like okay yeah. let, me, let me let me let me help out here a little bit which it's actually i have a it's a good like safety blanket to have um when stuff like that's kind of going going on so yeah um, yeah yeah. so yeah definitely yeah definitely definitely yeah and so it's it's cool because i i expect chris paul like i said to be back sunday um for a little bit like just play for a little bit and and but playoff chris paul is a sight to see man like it's always fun because he's got that little chip on his shoulder man he always pisses people off in the playoffs (laughs) and i think uh, he knows that this may be his I think it's last, last season. season. I think it's last get season. It done. Yeah. This is not Booker's last season. I'm not even going to say this is Durant's last season or eight. This is Paul's last season to yeah, I have think... a legitimate shot. Unless he goes yeah. into that uh, veteran buyout contract ish or minimum veteran role, chases a ring on a contender type thing, which I don't yeah. really see for him, but this may be his last most optimal you know season to get it done yeah. i think he knows that too this isn't this is just based primarily on my opinion not anything i've heard or anything like that when it comes to chris paul so I'll tell you for what you will but based off the tea leaves i've seen all throughout the year um you know they try to trade for kyrie irving there's been they've been in the rumors of trying to be involved with fred van vliet in the off season what this tells me is they probably had talks with Chris Paul because I don't I don't wouldn't say they're just gonna shop, you know, behind his back or anything like that. I think they have like a I think there's a level of culture that they built there where they're up front with their players, which I love a lot. Um and so I think when it comes to Chris Paul, even this is his last year with the Suns. I don't know if this is his last year playing. I think it might be his last year playing if the Suns win it all. I think this might be his last year with the Suns, period. Regard If they don't win all, this is his last year, period, because I think the Suns are going to be in the market heavily in free agency, trying to get a guy like Kyrie Irving, trying to get a guy like Fred Van Vliet. They're going to be all in on the top point guards in the league, trying to pair them with D-Book and, um, and, uh, and uh, KD, because they're going to try to build this thing for at least a few years before KD oh, yeah. retired. So, um, you got to cash in on your, on your investment. Uh, yep. I've, I've said earlier, and I know I was speaking to you and, and Rowan and Jacob about it, I wouldn't mind seeing Chris Paul possibly coming off the bench, but the realistic idea... Oh, that, like if they were know, to get somebody else? Yeah. Um, but, I, don't see, I, I don't see that happening. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, Fred Van Vliet, possibly. The pipeline scenario of getting Kyrie, absolutely not. That there is, I do not see Chris Paul coming off the bench for, for him. Um, so yeah, I think he knows, like you say, must be. This is his last year to get it done. Yeah, um, I think I mean, he looks, you know, up and sees. I've got Devin Booker. I've got you know, Katie. This is as good as it gets as far as having, a, you know, a nucleus of, of players in a pretty decent system that I can, you know, get yeah. it done. So. Yeah, definitely think this is last year with the Suns to either win it to get a to get a championship for sure because I think the Suns are going to move in. I feel like the Suns are going to move in another direction come the offseason when it comes to another point guard because they want to get younger at that spot. And I've always thought for the past, like, 
even last off season, I'm like, oh, right, this son's going to get some like a guy in line because Chris Paul's only getting older. And I know they gave him a big contract, but I never saw Chris Paul finishing out that contract. I kind of see it from a standpoint of they're trying to get a chip with him for sure. Yeah. But as soon as that run is over or anything, because, you know, Chris Paul, he's trying to, you know, I, I don't blame him for this. And I'm sure this is the case. Like he's trying to be with family more, you know, nowadays. And like, you know, so Put we shall years. see. Yeah, yeah exactly. Years. Yeah. But he's really trying to get that championship. And hopefully this is the year because this is this to me. This is this is he's one of the ever. only players left that is active, I could say. That I've really wanted one his whole career for, and he's just never. Yeah, I have a friend. Yeah, I have a friend that I used to live with. That's a big, big, big Chris Paul fan. That's desperately wanting him to get one. Um, and yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I kind of hate the backlash he gets. A lot of people hate him. When, in my opinion, dude, he he's such a good, he's a good person, good family man. He's also a really good uh, player. That's just. He just need like top five point guard in my opinion. He just needs that ring, man. He just needs that I ring. I really thought I really thought he was gonna get one with the Clippers, and I know that me too. Like Everybody super did. Super duper dated, but I really thought so. I thought he had a pretty decent shot in Houston, just injuries. But I really thought he was gonna get one with with when Lob City was in full. They should have got one. 2013, 2013, 14 was their best year, but actually, no, hold on. I will be, a, I'll say a hot take. 2014, 2015 season, do you think they beat the Warriors when the Warriors won it their first year? Because they, they had a three games to one lead against Houston, and Houston came back and beat them. And then the Warriors beat Houston in five. That kind of reminds that's me. That season that they like super, like, I love it. was one of those seasons where, the Clippers bench just got like they had Chris uh, Chris Paul. They had Paul Pierce coming off the bench. Jamal Crawford. Jamal Crawford. Uh, what's the other guy from uh, that played with Atlanta? Uh, Josh Smith, man. Josh Smith. Yeah. I was man. I what was it? Man at all, bro. Bench. Yeah, I was like, dude, they could they could they're gonna run through people at this point, and it just fell flat. But yeah, I mean. I think it was possible they could have beat the Warriors. I mean, yeah. the Warriors were still revolutionizing yeah. the game. Um, yeah. They weren't at full peak yet, but yeah, that kind of remi- that kind of run reminds me of the Warriors last year run, where say if they ran to the Suns, who knows what would have happened? Because the matchup difference is a little different. Same with that 2014-15 team. Sometimes, man, you just need luck, man. You just you, need you, luck. You just need luck and fortune, man. Not saying I'm not saying that the Warriors lose either of those series. It just you just never know. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. it's but, very possible. I yeah. think a lot of times, and people have said that I think a lot, and it's not discrediting the Warriors, but I think do think they've had a little bit of luck when it comes to certain matches. Oh yeah. Oh, 100%. Um, you know, call me for what I am. But, I mean, especially last year, I think a lot of people were saying their walk to the finals was not as hard as it probably has been in prior times. Um, you know, maybe the yeah. Nuggets, but you got a Nuggets team with no Jamal Murray. You got a young Grizzlies team that had never tasted any of that before. Kind of kind of had a little bit, not too much on it, but uh, – that's you sometimes need there. that, man. You sometimes need that because I know the the Suns had the good fortune of that in twenty twenty. Yeah, Anthony Davis got hurt. Um, you ran against the Nuggets team that lost Jamal Murray for the season, which kind of put a damper in it a little bit. I still think that Nuggets team was tough to beat, but the Suns were just too. They no yeah. wait, no the Suns no that's right. The Nuggets didn't have two of their starting guards in that series, and Chris Paul yeah. and Devin Booker just went. Crazy. They went nuclear. <laughs> and then, it, uh, yeah, they did. Mm, that was terrible. And then they ran into a Clippers team without Kawhi, which was huge. I am of the mindset that if Kawhi was healthy, I don't know if the Suns get past yeah, them. Yeah, might, might be looking at a different story. Yeah, I don't know if they get past them. But then which again, the Suns, the same, Suns I, didn't I have Chris Paul for game same. one. So yeah. I don't know. Who knows? I can't say that's the same this season for the Clippers, even though they don't have Paul George. No, Maybe they, you know, they, they would probably do damage, but I don't think it would be. I, I don't think people really even saw the Clippers as like a, a legitimate threat with 
uh, Paul George killed. I did. Me. I did, but that was. You do? Well, I did, but that was before I saw. But that was before I saw KD play fully with the Suns. This is when KD was. Yeah, kind of. They did. You're right. You're right. And I and I saw that fully. Yeah. Yeah, and I saw that fully healthy Clippers team, and I was like, ooh. Yeah, you're I right. haven't seen. You're I haven't right. seen KD with the Suns yet. I don't know about this team. I don't want to play them. But then I've seen KD with the Suns. And I've yeah. seen how they are now, and I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not too worried. I'm not extremely. I keep worried. forgetting we we've been nearly 82 games at this, so sometimes pieces get lost in different parts. Yeah. The Clippers, you're right. When they first came together again, I was like, okay, this is probably what they had in mind, and just got thrown derailed because of injuries. But then KD literally just sucked the life out of the Western Conference at 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the right. morning. So, yep, yeah. It was tough, man. It's tough, but yeah. Um, I know we were like getting in on time, but uh, I just had one more question for you, and that was basically, you know, the Suns are obviously sending out everybody, as we said at nauseum earlier in the show, um, and they're probably gonna have. A, I'm get. I'm on the line. Said like I said earlier that they're gonna play. The Stars are gonna play maybe a half or a quarter next next game against yeah. the Clippers. So these next two games, we're going to see a whole lot of bench players play and rotational players. Who are you looking forward to watching the most that you believe can be a big time X factor in the playoffs? And it could even be one of the starters like a Kogi or um, one of the main guys like Craig. But um, who who are you who are you most looking forward to to see? Okay, I want to see you take a next jump in these next two games because we probably are going to need you in some of these playoff matchups. It's probably more on a stand level. I wouldn't call it a stand level, maybe a near stand level. Okay. Uh, TJ Warren. Mm. I I I want that for him. I think that's the best way to put it up. I just you see what he can do when yeah. he gets it going, and I feel like he's still trying to find consistent rhythm. People forget he was out. Forever, I mean, before he got to Phoenix. I mean, he played yeah. sparingly, you know, in Brooklyn, but the dude is one of the better politics aside two-way players in recent time, not, you know, in years' time, but just in recent years. He's one of the better two-way players when healthy. So if he can click and you get that coming off the bench, man, he when he clicks, sometimes I feel like he can. He's more productive than some of the starters. Not trying to house, you know, Tori, uh, Josh Okogie, but I mean, he can be. I mean, you know, Josh Okogie is kind of like that filler for the starting spot. But you know, depending on how the postseason goes, you may see that definitely change next year. Just depending, yeah. Maybe he, you know, he could come in there and prove like, hey, I'm I'm not a star, but I feel a need that's needed right here, right for this position. But I think it's TJ Warren. I got mm. that's I good. To it. That's good. It would be interesting to see a game, a series where Monty Williams kind of makes adjustments, and you see TJ Warren in the starting lineup, and and you just have the whole group chat going, "Whoa, TJ Warren started all oh, snap," you know. Dude. So. That they, the, the 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 ability to stretch the floor like they be able to if you get TJ and he gets one of those games where he's in rhythm you know and I think the one benefit you have with the playoffs is you know you know who you're playing in the regular season but when you're consistently playing the same person in the playoffs you have yeah. that time to you know pre plan you know go over all of that 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 ability to stretch the floor is going to be one of the better X factors with between him, KD, Aiton, as far as that link goes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to see it. Man, that's that's amazing. Um who you got? Who you got? Who, who do I got? Man, that's tough. Uh I'm not really concerned with Terrence Ross. I mean, I know like he's been streaky here and there, but yeah. I kind of know who he is and what role he's gonna be playing. So it's not like I need to see more of or what. Um TJ Warren was a good one. I would say, honestly, because I already know what Craig brings to the table as well. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go and say this because I have a feeling he's gonna play a lot of minutes because I feel like Monty likes him a lot based off the way he plays him. I want to see more from Landry Shamit only because I knew you were gonna say that. I, I need to see. I need to see more from Landry Shamit, man. I need to. 
He's very inconsistent, and I love him to death, but he's so inconsistent, and he makes Suns fans mad. I understand that. Yeah. But um, I have a feeling that Monty's going to play him in these playoffs, man, just based off of him trying him out in certain certain situations. Um, uh, I know his minutes are probably going to decline, but it's obvious here and there that I feel like him and Damian Lee are going to have a competition in these next two games to see who's going to get more minutes in the playoffs. I would love for just I would love for Damian Lee to get spot up shots, especially if you have an on ball and you know. Yeah, I was just guy. gonna say that. I mean, and I get you know, Monty had to make decisions on who's gonna, you know, be the main, you know, reserves going forward, but it just never sits right with me to know that, you know, one of the guys that really, really helped out early this season when things weren't the Going best, well. you know, he was one of your more consistent pieces in general, not just for the bench, I'd say for the whole team. And now he just gives he doesn't DMP. He doesn't, yeah, he doesn't really and, play. Yeah, I mean he's and he still seems in good spirits on the bench. I mean, whenever they pan over that's to kind him, of that's just the person you know? he is, man. That's the person he is, and he's a good he's a He's a team first like, guy. Man, he understands are, from a business perspective. Oh, yeah. But I just can't help but think I'm like, man, there are a ton of teams out there that would kill to have that 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 three-point presence, you know, that spot-up shooting. Um, he's pretty good defensively. Especially in the fourth quarter. He's been killer in the fourth quarter. He was so reliable. And I'm looking now and I'm like, man, you're – but, you know, like you said, all for the name of the game. And much to your credit, like you said, the playoffs, you can see Damian Lee get a lot of time. You can see Landry Shaman get a lot of time. It literally just depends on those matchups. If yeah. we're going against, you know, a uh, younger, quicker team like the uh, Kings, um, if that ever, you know, transpires, you may see Shaman a little more for that, being able to, you know, get up and down the court yeah. a little bit more, maybe not more so for defense, but I don't know about Shannon, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to hype him up, but it's more it's more I just need to see more from him. It's not more of like that. So yeah, based off who I'm looking forward to these next couple games, I just want to see more from him because I'm curious to see if Monty's gonna play him spot minutes in the postseason. Because I know a lot of the starters are gonna play heavy minutes, and they're gonna be one yeah, of the yeah. starting one of the one of the top four guys are gonna be playing every single possession yeah, of yeah. the game. Easily. So Easily. it's gonna go from the top eleven to twelve to now then top nine to ten. So Landry Shaman and Damian Lee both could possibly not play. I could see Cameron Payne because Landry Shaman kind of plays a point guard slash two slash, combo. Yeah. He's and kind I, of a combo. Cameron Cameron Payne is gonna play is gonna be that in the playoffs. I'm not really worried about that. Then you have Terrence Ross who's gonna spell minutes for Booker. You have T.J. Warren, who's T.J. Warren and Tory Craig are going to be the other guys in there, and then that's so now you have a toss up between Biz and Jock, which I think they're going to go Biz because they know based off of playoff Jesus. atmosphere type match yeah, matchups. Um, it, for defensive purposes, that's kind of what you want them for. Offensively, kind of scares me a little bit. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but even uh, honestly, and I wanted to pick your brain on this the other night. He had one oh, of those yeah. games where he went crazy and. I'm oh yeah, there and I'm like, they're probably, maybe they don't re-sign him after this year, but I think they genuinely should give it some consideration. Maybe not as the next big man behind Aiden, but I mean, to have him on the bench as one of the guys, you know, injuries happen and stuff, I wouldn't mind seeing him come back. It just may not mm -hmm. be in that primary, you know, big reserve role, yeah. but... He's he's been good, man. I mean, he's he's done what I expected him to do. I didn't. I never. I don't think any of us expected him to come in and put up, you know, fifteen, eighteen points. And yeah, you know, but he's he's good for what he does. Um, to your uh, Shamit thing, I think my last point is super dark projection for Shamit. Irregardless of what happens this year, if we go all the way. I think they move on from him. I think he mm -hmm. goes somewhere like the Pistons, and then I think when we play them, he's going to drop like thirty points. Yeah, like just go. I mean, just go nuclear. I mean, win or lose, win or lose. Yeah, win or lose. Yeah, he's going. No, that's what always gonna happens, lose. man. Yeah, and he's not going to do it on a regular basis for the season. But when he sees that game on his calendar, he's just going to go nuclear. So. Mm -hmm. 
You ain't lying there. Works. Usually, how it happens when it comes to teams or players playing their old team. So that yeah. one shocked me one bit. That one shocked me one bit. Yeah, but we are close to tip off now. We got the yeah, yeah. Isn't tip off seven or seven thirty? I want to say seven. Oh, yeah. So yeah, we got the Sunless Suns and possibly I want to say the Lakerless Lakers is. I think I know they said um, Anthony Davis and LeBron were. Oh, they all are playing tonight. That just came out four minutes ago. So yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, they are. Um. Oh yeah, the game starts at seven thirty, bro. So you got time. Oh, we're Um, good, man. Yeah, we got time mm -hmm. to get comfortable. That's cool. Yeah, good to know. Thought it was gonna tip off, but yeah, I. I'm, I don't foresee with that information with LeBron, AD, and D Low playing. Probably going to be a pretty quick night <laughs> if I had to get. Oh, yeah. Sense. Lakers are going to take care um, of business tonight. Which yeah, is, which I, is. They should. Yeah. They, they should. should. If they do not, oh boy. Ooh, yeah. Boy. You're talking about no KD, no Chris Paul, no Booker, no Aiden, no TJ yeah, no. Warren. Yeah, Tier um, One's still sick too. So yeah, you know, I mean we're be, we're missing. That's gonna be wraps. <laughs> yeah, we're we're missing a good little good little portion. I mean, and the only person that was questionable were questionable for the Lakers were those three. So they should be able to take care of business. And I want to say that we are playing in LA. So we are playing in LA. Probably yep. gonna be a pretty easy easy night if I had. To oh yeah, they them. should they should definitely. Without question, take care of business. Yeah, um, Dennis Schroeder is basically the only one out for the Lakers, so everybody else is playing. Yeah, they should be good, and they probably need it just because they're trying to shore up that spot. Even though they're kind of locked in for the play-in, you just still want to make sure you're good. You know, try to Mm -hmm. get yourself in the best position to take on whoever's waiting for them on the other side, but it's going to be, uh, we're almost there. After the, yeah. After the Clippers and, and that's and, it. Yep. And on top of that, the Warriors play the Kings tonight and the war and the Kings are resting their players. So this is going to get interesting. I don't, I don't know. What it the Clippers- is cause, I mean, the Clippers are, I don't think the Clippers are resting. And I mean, technically they play tomorrow at one. Oh, they play the Trailblazers yeah. though. And, I mean, technically the Warriors and the Clippers are tied, but, you know, record-wise. Gonna, yeah, it's going to come down to the to, to the final week, or the, not final week, final game of the season to see who we're going to play in that fifth spot. Which so. is crazy because I just saw the East, the standings are locked in after tonight. So, but Dang. the West is just different. The West is yeah. different. Things, things change entirely too much for the West. but Yeah, um, way too yeah. much, man. Yeah, first Wait. through sixth seed in the East is locked. Um, so you got the oh the the the, the Nets clinched. The Nets are locked in at the sixth. Yeah. Hey, Mikel, shout out Mikel and Cam. Look what I'm talking about. Yeah, we live for Mikel and Cam. I yeah. mean, that's just what. Shout it out is the Twins, the bro. Um, I think they would be playing. Yeah, they're gonna play the 76ers first. I think that's good. I think that's good. I okay, don't, I don't think that's so. As much as I love Mikel and Cam, I got the Sixers in like five. Yeah, I still think the Sixers. Maybe honestly, win. honestly, who am I? Probably in a sweep. I'm hoping. When, when Mike, I say I'm hoping I'm, Mikel, I'm hoping Mikel goes nuclear in one of those games and just absolutely steals one. But when I say I'm rooting for them, probably harder than I've ever rooted for Brooklyn in my life. Oh um, yeah. For the underdog story? Are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, that's like a that's like a D'Angelo Russell. Actually, dude, this is similar to when. The Nets when D'Angelo Russell was on the Nets and they had that run, yeah, the and they played the Sixers and they played yeah. the Sixers in the first round. It's literally that all over again. Yeah, the fun Nets. I I I, I miss those guys, but yeah, that's a good one. The one that really I'm like probably one of my more exciting playoff matchups for this whole season. Mm, who is it? Cavaliers and the Knicks. I knew you were gonna say that. I was about to be like, you don't say Cavs and Knicks, man. That's Dude. like that's like a basketball nerd's dream, like right oh there. Oh my god! Both teams that are is... deep. Both teams yes. got good defense. Both teams got star players. Like you got you got two guys in. Uh, you got Donovan Mitchell. You got Julius Randle. You got Jalen Brunson. You got Darius Garland. You got Evan Mobley. Like man, the list goes on, man. Um, Jared Allen. I forgot about him. Good lord. Um, the other heat, guy they, from the Cavs too, which I mean, he can be streaky at times, and his name is 
dimming for me at the moment. Uh, Manuel quickly played with the. No, played with the uh, plays for the Cavs. Quickly is quickly Manuel is. Quickly. Uh, Manuel quickly is that guy, man. Yeah, yeah. Are you talking quickly, about Karis LeVert? I mean, yeah, Karis LeVert. Thank you. Mm, yeah, which he can be streaky at times, but I think the Knicks. I don't think. I think the Cavs may have the up on them, but. You, I, I just think it's going to be a good series. I think the yeah. Knicks may be particularly deeper, but I think the Cavs have the more talented of the best player in terms why, of uh, why do I why do I have a feeling, man, that the Heat are going to get the seventh seed after they beat the Hawks and they're going to upset the Celtics? Yeah, I I literally have looked at them. I said they're going to get the seventh. It's going to be a rematch of last year in the Eastern Conference. Finals. finals and they're gonna upset the Celtics man. and they're gonna upset the Celtics and they're gonna throw off the entire balance of yeah the, it's gonna ruin everything I'm just gonna be like because you I'm really like, hey is. that's Jimmy that's just Jimmy Butler bro yeah <laughs> them or love him you cannot count that man out I mean and they're gonna play the Sixers and they're gonna give them and they're gonna give the Sixers really tough matchup too so yeah I'm excited for the Nets and the and the uh in the Sixers the Cavs and the Knicks uh, whoever comes out of that with the Bucks, yep. yeah, the Hawks and the uh, and the Bulls, just depends. But yeah, it's it's gonna be a very. This is one of the seasons where you really people say like, "Oh, I got this thing going." You really don't know. Like it could yeah. go so many different ways. So tough, which man. is good because I think for a while we got kind of used to you know the Warriors are going, you know, you know whomever. This is good. Like it's it. very good. It's good for the NBA. Uh, yeah. I actually am now starting to like the play-in style a lot more too because you're getting a lot of teams. Um, I don't know how I feel teams. about it, and the only reason I say that is right now don't care too much. You know, the Suns aren't in the seventh, eighth, yeah. you know, none of those. I feel but like. if they were, it's like if we fought our butts off to get there just to be in the play-in, it's like it's almost. If I'm, I'm like, hey, I didn't. I'm, it's not my fault. These other teams are in the ninth and tenth seed. I got yeah. my playing spot. If we're going off the old rules, let me. The, beat, the, the but... beauty of the seven and eight, though, you get two chances if you lose. So yeah. that's. But at the same time, last I get, I get you. Yeah. yeah, last year was good, especially in the East with the Cavs and uh, the Heat and all those other guys. Uh, well, the not the Heat, the Hawks. But yeah, I think this one is going to be really good. You got a lot of gritty teams down there. I really, I, a lot of people have high hopes for the Hawks this year after they got Dejounte Murray, but hasn't really transpired to wins. So it's going to be interesting. Raptors are on their last leg. It's it's going to be interesting to say the least. Yep, yep. And what you said, the Raptors, right? Like, yeah, they're... yeah. You know, they're two. Two steps away from letting Nick Nurse go. Which I'm about to say, yeah, because Nick me. Nurse, Nick Nurse, probably about yeah. to leave soon. So yeah, this I think they're both like because I saw a report where they said they were looking at letting him go, and then I saw a report where he was saying he was leaving. So I'm like, both the I want then. Yep, it's nothing left Nick to Nick, decide. So and they he brought a he brought a championship. Well, Kim and Kawhi they brought a championship yeah. to, to Toronto. He's he's done his thing, man. So um, I know that there is. Oh, they're gonna rebuild absolutely. That, I mean, shoot, the, all, all all of the. I mean, honestly, the tea leaves were there all season because there there was a time where all everybody was on the trading block before the trade deadline. So their Fred Van Bleet's gonna be gone. I feel like they're gonna. They're, I feel like they're gonna wait to trade OG Anunoby until the new coaching staff gets in there. But a lot of these guys are gone from that championship yeah. board. They're all. They're all heading out. I told I think... one of my friends, I said the Raptors are so weird because when they had that almost fire sale and let everybody go, if you take at least one of their key pieces, if you take a Pascal Siakam, which I know he's not going anywhere, you no. take um, OG Ananobi, Fred Van Vliet, you split them up and put them on different teams, they instantly raise the ceiling of that team. But yeah. together... They just can't make it work anymore. And they did for a minute. I mean, they were, they were good for a, a very long time. I just think after a while, you get probably tired of not being able to make it work. You know, you had Kyle Lowry leave. Um, that was a pretty big blow. The Heat are kind of in that same spot, and I get Jimmy can turn it on whenever he wants. Yep. I did not think, and I know it's not just because of this, but I did not think losing P.J. Tucker was going to be that big of a 
downfall on them like that. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, that's the Tucker. I, it's me being a troll. I'm like, the Tucker effect is – PJ Tucker, man, three. he's really, really important. Yeah. Like, with his role and everything. It's 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 yeah like he 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 was a big reason for the Bucks success man so um and that that was kind of huge for them when he when they let him go they kind of they could have used him really much in that Boston series but also Chris Middleton was out so yeah they got to get him played out if if yeah if the Bucks want any chance. Which I mean, they still have a huge chance. They still got Giannis. As long as you got Giannis, I think pretty much anything's possible. But yeah, you got to have Middleton. I don't think you can. All get three got to be healthy. Win. Yeah, Giannis, Giannis Middleton, and Holiday all got to be healthy for yeah. them to win a championship. Yeah, yep. I don't think you're getting to the finals and winning without Middleton. I don't. No. I don't think it's possible. Just because it's so much fatigue, and you need yeah. that extra person so bad. Giannis can't do it by himself. Well, yeah, nobody can do it by themselves. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. Luca thought so for a minute. You know? Luca, um, Luca got as far as he could, and I wouldn't even say he got by himself. Jalen, Jalen, Jalen Brunson helped him quite a bit, in my opinion. Yeah, quite a bit. I, and I think honestly, if you ask anybody, probably well more so now. If you'd rather have Kyrie or J- uh, Jalen Brunson, they probably would say Jalen, just for based the based off the fit. Yeah, based I was gonna say fit. based off the systematic fit, but you know, we'll uh, see. But I then think again, the, uh, then again, do you, I? I would rather have Kyrie with still having the with still having the option of keeping Dinwiddie and Dorian Finney Smith with them. Yeah, you got a point there. Uh, the Mavericks are up on the Bulls at the end of the third, 91 to 85. Uh, okay. Luka, Luka Doncic has played a whopping 13 minutes. So that's probably right at a quarter. Yeah, that's like, yeah, that's like, quarter and a, that's like a quarter and, and some change. Yeah, it's like a quarter and some change there. Had 13 points, five rebounds, three assists. So that's pretty good for, you know. 14 points? Quarter. Thirteen and five rebounds and three assists. Wow! Yeah, he went he went all out for those minutes. Yeah, he he <laughs> literally put out there what he could put out there. Um, yeah. So I mean, hey, they win tonight. I think it keeps them in the conversation for the next what two days. So yeah, the Thunder ha- the Thunder control their own destiny though. Um, yeah, that, that, that's it, that's scary. Yeah. OKC okay, Thunder control their own destiny, man. And the Thunder won yesterday. They beat the Jazz. Yeah, that, that didn't help, which yeah. I said that. I said, you know, them playing the Jazz who, you know, lost uh, Kessler already. They're not in the playoffs, not in the play-in. They don't really have anything to play for. They're not going to go all out against you. So, Jazz pretty got easy. Bright, Jazz got a bright future, though. They got a lot of young players. Oh, to... they got a crazy future for a team that yeah. literally just mortgaged, you know. They mortgaged their future. Know. They mortgaged their future, and they're very competitive this year. Very yeah. competitive. It was in the, the, in, the, in the beginning of the year, they were a top four team in the West. That's crazy. Yeah, for a minute, we thought they were going to be what the Kings ended up being. Yep. Literally. We thought they were going to be what the Kings are. Yep. You're absolutely Literally. right. Literally. But yeah, I mean, you got Laurie Markinen, you got Colin Sexton, um, Kelly Olenek. I mean, they, they got a lot of guys over there. Um, they got a bright future, like you said. They, they got a really bright future. To yeah. literally have just traded away. Uh, Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert not too long, you know, before that. Going into full rebuild mode, you know, Danny Ainge loves his picks. To turn around and be, like, competitive, to say the least, that in the West, that's that's that was impressive. I was impressed. I think a lot of people were impressed with that. Yeah. Well, man, it's going to be some fun, fun Two games. Yeah, these next couple of weeks are going to be. Uh, I'm excited, man. I'm so excited for I'm playoff nervous. basketball. I'm nervous too, <laughs> I'm but that's, nervous. That's, that's what basketball is all about. That's what the NBA is all about for this for this time. You know, I've been waiting for like a minute, and it's getting crazy. I think once we know who the Suns play first, I'll be fine. Oh yeah, I'll like, be once t- I know, I can picture. Okay, it's going to be this team. Yeah, it's done. It's crazy. Yeah, we cool. we still got a couple days before we really know. Like it's not yeah. set in stone. That's I mean, crazy, man. nothing that happens tonight, if we win or if the Lakers lose, I mean, if the Lakers win, it doesn't 
We still if the Lakers know. if the Lakers lose and the Warriors win, I'm for sure confident we're not playing the Lakers. That's all. Yeah, that's all I know. Yeah, that's a done deal. That's yeah. a done deal. That's a done deal. So, but yeah, that will do it for this episode of the Miller Sports Podcast. Please hit the like and subscribe button as always. Right, Miller Sports Podcast affiliated with this company behind me, Burn City Sports. That's our company. Um, I know we haven't done a podcast in a while as a group. Um, but make yeah, we should be back for playoffs. We're not going. Should be back. We're not going to let that. Kind We've of... had some issues, uh, you know. With uh, one of our guys, Jacob has a, a kangaroo for his internet service, so yeah, we should all be back soon. Though you should see the whole yeah. game better. Yeah, we'll we'll be back soon. But as always, stay tuned for anything on YouTube with Burn City Sports. Anything um on the website, so burncitysports dot com. And like I said, please hit the like and subscribe button on Burn City Sports on YouTube. And as always, I am your host, Franklin Miller, joined by my co-host, as I would say, Christopher <laughs> Denson, as Fridays with Chris for the Miller Sports Podcast. And that's always. Um, have a good night, everybody, and uh, see you soon. Go, sir.